Okay, so in this video series, I'm just going to go through the differences on these two 7-inch Lowrance units. On the left, we have the Lowrance Elite 7 Ti, which is a new model for 2016. And on the right is the Lowrance HDS7 Gen 3, which was out in 2015, and it's continuing as their top-of-the-line unit for 2016. So on the front of the unit, the first thing we'll notice is the lack of keys on the Elite Ti compared to the Gen 3. We have a full keypad on the Gen 3, which will allow us to do every single control, either completely by the, com the keypad or with combination touchscreen or fully touchscreen. The Elite Ti will work fully touchscreen or with a combination of some keys. You will, however, have to touch the screen at some point to make selections with the Elite Ti. For an explanation of the keypads and their functions, and some cool tricks you can do with the HDS Gen 3, take a look at my HDS Gen 3 tips and tricks video. The card slot is very easy to find on the HDS Gen 3. It's right here under this door, dual micro SD card slots. This one here is a little bit trickier, but under the Lowrance logo, they've cleverly hidden the single micro SD card slot. The advantage to having two card slots is with the wireless function on the unit. You can have a blank card in one slot and then your Navionics or CMAP charting in another slot on the HDS, whereas you cannot do that on the Elite Ti. The benefit to having the dual card slots and having a blank card in there is you will require that to download any information such as Insight Genesis mapping or to do Wi-Fi software upgrades. Those will not transfer to the unit itself, it will require a card in the card slot. So you would have to remove your Navionics card and insert a blank card into the Elite Ti in order to do a wireless upgrade, should you choose not to write to your Navionics card. You'll also notice these accent pieces here. They are removable and they do come with a second set. Black is installed on the unit when you get it, but you also get a light blue color set you can install. You can also sand those down and paint them. Hidden under each corner of the Elite Ti is the flush mounting screws, and you have the same on the HDS where this bezel pops off. Another thing you can do to customize these units is to paint these bezels. The HDS unit still uses the traditional gimbal bracket and knob connection, whereas we have a single lever quick release on the Elite Ti, which will allow tilt and swivel with this QRB5 bracket. You'll also be able to use the same RAM mounts that are available to eliminate this bracket and connect right in here that the Elite 4 and 5 would use. On the Elite 7, I would recommend you do not use the 1 inch ball, but go to the 1.5 to support the extra weight of the unit. So now that we've gone through the physical differences on the unit, let's take a look at the performance and see how long they take to boot up. So both units take about 30 seconds to boot up, with the HDS unit being slightly faster.